and welcome to the WWBBL Cup Final Preview. I'm here with Leicester Riders forward Christina Gaskin ahead of the game on Friday. Christina, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, obviously, you've had a bit of a turbulent time, um, obviously, with your own situation. So about three, four weeks ago, you blogged that you weren't quite sure where you were going to be. Um, perhaps if the final was three weeks ago, you would missed it so what a relief is it to actually be able to play in the final and actually know it's going to go ahead absolutely so i actually got the all clear yesterday from the doctor um i've been playing with a heart rate monitor on for the last two weeks so they've done a lot of thorough testing and i'm very happy and relieved to say that um you know everything's okay and i'll be able to play in the final so full steam ahead now till friday um, and obviously, you, you talked a little bit, obviously, in your past and in your blogs that you've had a bit of a turbulent career. Obviously, you had things on in Italy and obviously you blogged quite prominently about your time in college. So just talk about how sort of the difficulty of going through what you've gone through in the last month has sort of have reflected on your whole career. And the fact that it's kind of behind you allows you to look forward, not just short term, but long term with continuing. Absolutely. I think that um, obviously I've, you know, encountered like any athlete, a lot of different challenges um, with the serious car accident in Italy that you're referring to. Um, some of my struggles through college, which, you know, is obviously written on my blog. And I think that just sets you up to be able to deal with change and to be able to be adaptable and to be resilient and realize that you have the sort of mental strength to be able to get through those challenges. Um, I think that you know, being an athlete and being used to even, you know, traveling and playing in different countries, meeting different people, getting used to a new team, a new culture, a new language, perhaps. Those are all challenges that you're used to facing. And I think sometimes um, being able to do that and being able to have experience in your back pocket of those kind of challenges sets you up to be able to deal with, you know, the current pandemic and a situation that we're in. Yeah, and unique probably brings us on to this year perfectly. Um, you haven't played Seven Oaks in a year, which is a very odd situation. And obviously Seven Oaks themselves now nearly two months without playing. So talk about the preparation to go into this final when you've got a team that you're not really sure exactly what you're going to do compared to obviously your previous finals. Um, I think that obviously, you know, we haven't had the luxury of playing them thus far this year. But I think we also have to remember that um, a lot of their personnel are similar. You know, we're, we're used to playing against Yanni Clark. We're used to playing against Kat Carr, Renee Bush. I've played against Renee since we were juniors. So we were very familiar with one another's game. And equally, you know, from their perspective, I'm sure they would say the same thing. We've got a lot of returners and um, that they're used to uh, their style of play and some of the actions that we run. So although we haven't had the opportunity to play one another, I'd like to think that we've had the experience experience in the past and um, so that gives us you know both of us an advantage yeah and obviously last year you didn't meet them in a the final which was a, almost a little bit unusual the way obviously less than seven oaks have been the last couple of years but you played them in the trophy semi-final nearly mm -hmm. a year ago. that was a, a narrow victory is there anything you can take specifically from those encounters last year into the prep and into friday's final no, absolutely. I think any time that we play Seven Oaks, we know it's going to be a tough game. Um, we know that it's, they're going to be competitive and they're, you know, competitors at heart. They'll play right till the final buzzer. And if we um, and have any mental lapses on defense, they're going to take advantage of those. They're going to exploit those and look to score. And consequently, if, you know, if we don't run, you know, a good game offensively and look to play to our advantages, then they'll capitalize off of that and turn their defense into offense. So um, it's very much a game that, you know, whoever makes the least amount of mistakes on the day, um, quite frankly, um, will probably come up with the victory. Yeah, and obviously you, you, you mentioned there your defence. Obviously, that's probably the standout this year. You've played nine games as a team this year. You've only allowed over 50 points three times. Um, just talk, obviously, with the challenges of everything that's gone on this year, how you'd be able to click, especially on that end of the floor, so, so efficiently as a team. I think that with you know, had the luxury of the fact that we've been in practice quite a lot. We obviously began practice late August, beginning of September last year. Um, and we've had the ability to be able to pretty much carry on practicing throughout, you know, bar a couple of isolations. And so that's really given us the advantage of really putting things in early from a tactical perspective. With the lack of games, we've been able to go up and down and scrimmage and really focus on, rather than preparing necessarily tactically for a game, we're really looking at our own defensive tactics. And it seems to have come together a lot quicker than it did last year. And we seem to be a little bit more advanced and further along than we were with the team we had last year at the same position. And as for you personally, obviously this year, perhaps not involved on the offensive end in terms of 
shots as much, but obviously you, you're still a, you're almost at a career high in assists, and you are shooting nearly sixty percent of the floor on the floor of, on the season. So just talk about how your role is on the certainly on the offensive end in trying to facilitate for others as well as finding the right time to score yourself. No, absolutely. I think that we have a we have the advantage of having a lot of offensive threats. You know, we've got Holly that can you know score at will. We've got Kate that can score inside out. You know, when she wants to. Um, Ella's a great post threat for us, and Sarah, obviously the returning MVP last year. You know, she's a great threat in scoring in transition in the half court. So we really have like a plethora of players that can put the ball in the basket. So it's not something that is required of me. Um, but, you know, if the, if the ball comes, I am going to shoot the ball when I'm open. I, you know, will knock down open shots. Um, I just try and find my role, you know, in any given game um, in a way that, you know, will help bring the team to a victory. So if that means, you know, finding people when they're open or, you know, setting good screens and being able to create something for people off of the dribble, whatever's necessary from me to be able to, you know, help my team win the game. And just lastly, obviously, you talked, well, you tweeted yesterday about obviously British basketball having a catalyst for the next five years. And obviously, one of those things you mentioned was obviously the game being on Sky, um, which is a big step forward. So how important do you, you think that is for building the British game, especially on the female side moving forwards? No, I think it's huge. I think that um, it allows us to reach... Um, a larger and broader audience. So capture people that maybe haven't seen basketball, you know, professional basketball for the first time. Um, also, I think it's great to have the women's game, you know, highlighted and be a profile on such a large network because, you know, there's little, you know, Nina's when I was younger, or Christina's, sorry, when I was younger watching, and hopefully we can pass on some kind of inspiration to those younger female athletes that might, you know, they might go out the next day and find a basketball and dribble on their driveway for the first time. And I think that's like the most powerful thing that you can do, you know, inspire people from the from the grassroots perspective. Perfect. Um, well, best of luck on Friday in the final, and um, hopefully it all goes well for you. Thank you very much.